There are times in my class when I don't want to have my students looking up at the front of the class. Um, they're sitting there looking at the PowerPoint slides or the pictures I've projected. I'd rather have them sitting in groups and actually talking to one another and looking inward. And so the way I can do about that, of course, I could just do some handouts and just have them work on some stuff. But there are other ways of doing this as well. And one of the things I like to use is um, something like a PowerPoint presentation or a collection of photos that I'll have, I'll spark some discussion or have them discuss answer questions or just follow along if it's a PowerPoint presentation and what I do is I actually take my slides or my photos and I actually shall we say project them onto their phones um, so how does this work um, well thankfully there's a free and easy website to use called Beamium and Beamium is one of those sites where you don't have to register and you don't have to really do anything fancy to make it work what you can do is you can upload a PDF file or a collection of photos and then once it's there you'll get a code and you can share that code with whoever you want. It doesn't even have to be in the same room as you. It can be anywhere in the world and they can get that and then you can actually advance the slides and it will advance on every device that's logged in. So let me show how it works. Uh, let's start off by going to beamium.com and then in the center here there's a little arrow with um, a little button and I'm actually going to click on that and then I can choose my presentation. Now remember it needs to be in either PDF or it needs to be a series of photos like JPEG or PNG files. So I've uploaded mine and it comes up here and asks me if I want to present live. Live means that instead of just me sharing the slides and they can advance and move whatever they want, I'm actually going to present it um, on my phone or on whatever device I have, my laptop or tablet, and as I advance, it will advance automatically on everybody else's device. So that's what I want to do. I want to say yes. <clears throat> so here is the presentation. This is an older presentation I have that I've had some slides as I thought I might be able to use. So what I'm going to do now is I want to actually project it to my to the students' phones. So how do they do that? Well, they just grab their phone and they go to beamium.com and you'll notice at the very top of the screen here I have a eight-letter code. And so that eight-letter code is good for 14 days and I can actually then type it in T-Y yeah, yeah. and once they've typed that in, it doesn't matter if whatever case you use, um, it doesn't matter if it's uppercase, lowercase, and then just click on join presentation and voila, you'll see the first slide, the same slide that I have on my screen here. It also appears on my phone. Now, if I turn it sideways and I have it on rotate, it will actually give it much larger. It's much easier to follow along. Now, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to advance the slide on the screen, and as you see, it advances the slide on the phone. These are only connected through the internet in this case. I'm telling it what to do and it will automatically go. Now, on my presentation on the screen, I can actually make a few other setting changes. So at the bottom left corner, there's a little blue arrow, and, and you'll see that there are all these um, little thumbnails of each of the slides, and I can actually click directly on those and advance to that slide, and again, it automatically advances to the slide on the phone. So the other things I can also do is up in the right hand corner there's a little gear for the settings and in there I can actually turn off the present live or I can also uh, turn on or off the ability to download the slides. Sometimes I'll turn it off just because I don't want students downloading and then advancing ahead. So I'll just turn it off and then that means that when they click on the download button um, they won't be able to access the slides. It will say you, you don't have that. Um, now the other one is you can also click on full screen and it will actually get rid of all of the borders of, for the um, from the browser and it will look more like a slides in that case. There are a few other things that are on here. For example, there's a little chat function and students can actually chat and you can actually click and you can see the messages as they come up so people can ask questions. I can also see how many viewers there are. It tells me what slides I'm on. I'm nine of 10. It tells me I'm in presenter mode and if you were to go over to the other one, there's actually less information. There's basically just the code, a download button and they can also click on, if they like a slide, they can actually click like and you'll see that the like appeared on and off as I did that here and it will tell me how many people have liked the slide so you can actually take a little quick poll with students you could put up a photo have a question or whatever and then they click on heart if they agree or disagree so tell you about some of the ways that I actually use this with my class number one 
I'll sometimes put up a, a set of photos with no text. Um, I've gotten some photos from some public domain uh, websites like Pixabay and Unsplash, and I actually put them in there. They're just conver people in a conversation. They're talking to one another in different scenarios. So maybe at a shop, maybe on the side of the road with a map, and that type of thing. And what I'll do is I'll project it, and they'll be sitting in their groups together at their table or whatever, and they have their phones, and it switches to that picture, and they have to then come up with a conversation that's being talked about in that case. So what are they saying? Um, things like, excuse me, can I ask you a question? I'm lost, can you give me directions, that type of thing. So they come up with that, and I walk around, and instead of them looking up at the front to see the picture and look at me, I'm actually walking around listening to them. And when I feel like they've gotten to the point where they're kind of winding down, I just advance it and they see it switch on their phones. I don't even say anything and they'll see the photo change and they go to the next picture and start doing the same thing. Keeps them on task and keeps them focused inward into their own group. Other thing I'll also do is sometimes I'll just take a PowerPoint um, presentation and I'll do questions. One question, really big text per slide and what I'll do then is I'll change the background color for each of those so that they can see that the question has changed. Again, download as a PDF, upload it, and then they sit there and then whenever I feel like the question's kind of winding down, I'll advance to the next one and they can answer the next question. Again, I could do it as a list, but the problem with I find when I give them a list of questions is that they just race, some groups just race through it and some go much slower. This keeps the pace going, keeps everybody on the same page, same question. Um, what other things do I do? Well, obviously I will do presentations, but I also have students do it. Since this does not require registration, then what I'll do is I'll have, sometimes I'll have the students, they'll actually do their presentations and then upload them in their group. So instead of having one person presenting to the whole class, I have one person per group presenting within their own groups. And so I'll have like four groups, three or four groups going on. And what they'll do is they put their slides on the Beamium, they tend the code to everybody, and then they advance their slides and everybody can go along and they can be seated. So it's not like a big formal presentation, but it still goes through the same steps as a regular presentation. For me, I just walk around and listen and I may have a little rubric or something. I'm keeping track of what's going on, write some notes. And, but they also share that Beamium codes with me so I can actually get access to the slides and I can check the slides later on as well. So there's just kind of three ideas, um, but there's obviously a lot more that could be done with this. Very handy tool. What happens with the stuff that you've uploaded? Well, after 14 days, it vanishes, it disappears, unless you have an account. So what's great with this is I don't have to worry about what's stored on there, if the students are going to come back later and check it. It's gone. I can just save those presentations. I can upload them again later on and give a new code and give it to my new class. So I hope that's helpful to you. I hope you find some value in that. Let me know if you have any questions or if you have any ideas that you want to share with it, just let me know as well. Um, and if you're interested in any of these videos, you can also subscribe and then that way whenever I upload a new video, you'll get a notification and let you know that you can come and visit again. Thanks again. Bye now.